Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to block as part of the High Yield ECGs edition. So just a little about the Medicine Guide. So the Medicine Guide is a YouTube channel which offers free online videos to help support medical students throughout their entire journey at medical school. So I've got videos on how to be successful at medical school as well as hints and tips on how to approach anatomy, histology, CBL and PBL teaching. I've got videos focusing on the high yield images that commonly crop up in final exams and I've got high yield videos focusing upon the obs and gynae topics that crop up in final exams as well as paediatric topics that crop up in final exams, a cardiology edition and also a neurology edition. Now this video in conjunction with others will form part of my high yield ECG edition. So without further ado, let's get started. So like I mentioned previously, today's video will be focusing upon heart block. So I'll be giving you an example of what each of the different heart blocks look like on an ECG. And afterwards, we'll be discussing the management of each of the different types of heart block. And also we'll be considering the causes of each of the different heart blocks. So as long as you've got your pen and paper at the ready, we can get started. So this is the very first ECG we'll look at today. So I'll give you 10 seconds to write down the answer and consider what this ECG presents. So in particular, what type of heart block is being shown here, or you can pause the screen if you like. So I'll give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, so let's have a look at the answer. So whenever I like to look at an ECG, what I like to do is to identify quite simply where the P waves are, where the QRS complexes are, and also what exactly are the T waves. So let's identify initially the P waves on this ECG. And let's identify the QRS complexes. And finally, let's identify the T waves. So hopefully, after looking at the CCG, you would have noticed that the PR interval in this ECG is prolonged. So if you have a look at the example in the blue writing, we can see that the PR interval is more than five small squares. So this is an example of first degree heart block. So in first degree heart block, an ECG will present with PR interval greater than five small squares. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. So the causes of first degree heart block involves an increased vagal tone, athletic training, an inferior MI, mitral valve surgery, myocarditis, hyperkalemia, and medications such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, and amiodarone. One thing to consider is that a first degree heart block might be considered a normal variant in some patients. Now, first degree heart block doesn't involve any form of treatment. Okay, so that's just a nice quick summary of first degree heart block. So let's have a look at the next ECG. So again, I'll give you 10 seconds to pick out the key features from the CCG and write down what you think is the underlying heart block. Okay, so let's have a look at the answer. So looking at this CCG, I like to confirm exactly where the P waves are to clarify that this ECG is in sinus rhythm. I also like to confirm exactly where the QRS complexes are. I like to clarify that each P wave is followed by a QRS complex and conversely each QRS complex is preceded by a P wave. So as you can see that this isn't necessarily the case in the CCG but we'll talk about it as the video progresses. I also like to clarify exactly where the T waves are. And then I like to have a look at the PR interval. 
So hopefully you can appreciate that the PR interval is becoming progressively longer until we reach the fourth P wave where it appears that the QRS complex is in fact missing. And then the next PR interval afterwards is very, very short. So these are two key points which are used to identify this particular type of heart block. So the PR interval is immediately longest before the dropped beat. So in this case, that's the third PR interval. And the PR interval is shortest immediately after the dropped beat. So if you look on the PR interval on the far right hand corner, you can see that it's actually very, very short. So putting this piece of information together, hopefully you would have recognised that this is an example of second degree heart block, Mobitz type 1 or Wenke back. So the common mnemonic that's used is longer, longer, longer drop, that is a Wenke back. So as the PR interval becomes progressively longer until you reach a P wave with a missing QRS complex and then the entire cycle resets itself and repeats itself again. So this is a very high yield ECG and you need to be very confident in being able to recognise this because this is something that crops up time and time again in exams. Another thing to bear in mind is that Mobitz type 1 and Winky back are used interchangeably so you need to be comfortable with using both terms. So let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. So we've mentioned that the key ECG findings is that the PR interval is longest immediately before the dropped QRS beat and the PR interval is shortest immediately after the dropped QRS beat. Or you can use the mnemonic longer, longer, longer drop. That is a winky back, if that helps you remember. So in terms of the causes of a second degree heart block, we need to consider that it might be attributable to certain medications such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, amiodarone. Other causes involve increased vagal tone like in athletes, an inferior MI, myocarditis, following mitral valve repair and following a tetralogy of phallus repair. Now management is something that we do need to consider in these patients. So if the patient is symptomatic, then we could offer them atropine or in rare cases, potentially consider permanent pacing. But patients who've got second degree heart block, Mobitz type 1 or Wenke back, and are asymptomatic, then no treatment is needed. OK, so the key thing to remember, I think, is Mobitz type 1 and Wenke back are terms used interchangeably. The mnemonic I commonly use is longer, longer, longer drop. That is a wanky back to identify the ECG features. And only symptomatic patients are offered treatment. And the treatment usually is atropine or very rare cases, permanent pacing. So I think those are the key things to take away from that particular ECG. So let's have a look at the next one. So I'll give you 10 seconds or you can pause the video to identify the key features of the CCG and also to helpfully recognise what particular type of heart block is found. OK, so let's have a look at the answer. So again, first thing to do is to identify exactly where the P waves are and then to ensure that each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. And conversely, each QRS complex is preceded by a P wave. And again, that isn't quite the situation here, but we'll talk about it. Then to identify the T waves. And it's important to look at the PR interval. So hopefully in this example, you can see that not all of the P waves are followed by a QRS complex. And also, hopefully you can understand that the PR interval in this ECG remains at a fixed constant rate. So 
these are the two key findings of this ECG. So this is an example of second degree heart block, Mobitz type 2, or I've seen it in some books as hay block, but I think second degree heart block, Mobitz type 2 is what's used more commonly, but I would say just be aware that it could also be called hay block. So the mnemonic that I use is that if the P's don't get through, you have Mobitz type 2. So remember, not all of the P waves are followed by a QRS complex. As we can see, again, it's the fourth P wave, which isn't followed by a QRS complex. But the key difference between Mobitz type 2 and Mobitz type 1 is that in Mobitz type 2, the PR interval is at a fixed rate. So the PR interval isn't becoming progressively longer. The PR interval is at a fixed rate. Okay, so let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. So we've mentioned the key ECG findings is that there's a fixed constant PR interval and not all P waves are followed by a QRS complex. And the mnemonic that people commonly use is that if the P's don't get through, you have Mobitz type 2. So the causes of second degree heart block Mobitz type 2 involves an anterior MI, idiopathic fibrosis of the conducting system, mitral valve repair, rheumatic fever, myocarditis, Lyme's disease. Other causes include systemic sclerosis, SLE, amyloidosis, hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis, hyperkalemia, and also we need to consider medications such as a beta blocker, digoxin and amiodarone. Now the management of a second degree heart block or Mobitz type 2 is as follows. The patient needs to be immediately transferred for hospital admission. The patient needs to receive cardiac monitoring and a backup temporary pacing initially and eventually they will receive a permanent pacemaker. Okay, so let's have a look at the last ECG. So I'll give you 10 seconds to identify the key features and uh, write down what you think could be the ultimate diagnosis of this ECG. Okay, so let's go through this ECG. So again, I like to identify exactly where all the P waves are and to ensure that it's in sinus rhythm. So if you have a look at this ECG, you can see that some of the P waves have been superimposed on the QRS complexes. And that would be the first P wave and the third P wave. Okay. Next, I want to identify exactly where the QRS complexes are and confirm that each P wave is followed by a QRS complex and that each QRS complex is preceded by a P wave. Again, hopefully you can see that that isn't quite the case in this ECG and we'll talk about it as we progress through the video. Then I like to look at the T waves, identify exactly where they are and it's important that you recognize that we've got a missing QRS complex after the second P wave, the fourth P wave, and the sixth P wave. And the PR interval, you can see, is variable as we look across the ECG. So just to clarify, not every P wave is followed by a QRS complex. The PR interval is irregular. So with these two key pieces of information in mind and the fact that some of the P waves, in particular P waves number one and number three, have been superimposed on their QRS complex, Hopefully you would have recognised that this shows a complete absence of AV conduction and this is an example of third degree heart block or sometimes it's known as complete heart block. Okay. So if the P's and Q's don't agree, you've got Mobitz type 3. Okay. 
Okay, so just to summarise, if the P's and Q's don't agree, you've got Mobitz type 3 because you've got a complete absence of AV conduction on the, AC, on the ECG. And third degree heart block or complete heart block is caused by an inferior MI, idiopathic degeneration of the conducting system. And again, we need to consider medications such as calcium channel blockers, beta blockers and digoxin. The management of a third degree heart block or complete heart block is very, very important. These patients need to be urgently admitted to hospital for cardiac monitoring and backup temporary pacing. And these patients do need to have a permanent pacemaker. Okay. So hopefully you found today's video helpful. If you've enjoyed today's video, please could I kindly ask you to give me a thumbs up and to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and kindly share my video with your friends. So thank you very much for watching my video today and I wish you all the best with your exams.